South Korea will reimpose tougher COVID-19 restrictions as it battles a third wave of infections. From tomorrow, bars and nightclubs in Seoul will close and dining in restaurants will be limited. Now for a closer look, we're joined by Dr. Annelise Walder-Smith from Nanyang Technological University. Uh, firstly, it, it's encouraging news from the Oxford vaccine, uh, along with the others that have been announced. How soon do you expect immunizations to begin around the world? Indeed, very encouraging and, and promising news for all the three leading candidates. Uh, we are all speculating, obviously, when it will be available to the public. Uh, all stars need to be aligned for the first vaccine, which is a Pfizer is likely to be looked at by FDA and, um, and receive emergency authorization on the 10th of December. And I think all the other vaccines will follow in late December or early January, and then it depends on the speed of delivery to the public. Now, we've been, uh, you know, reporting that cases in this, um, in this region are rising. We're talking about Japan, South Korea, now in Hong Kong. Um, are we looking at another wave of infections that's, uh, that, that, that's what Europe is experiencing now? Very unfortunate indeed. Um, I think what is happening in Asia is a reflection of the increased uh, transmission intensity that we see now worldwide. Um, combined maybe also with a little bit of a fatigue by the public to comply with all the measures. It's very unfortunate, but a third wave is currently happening and, you know, and we may have a fourth wave as well. Now, what do you put this down to? Could you elaborate a bit further? Like Hong Kong, for example, has hit a three month high in infections despite its strict restrictions. So how is this virus sort of, uh, sort of outworking us, if, if that makes sense? So because we remain connected, you know, so mobility has decreased, obviously, but there's still imported cases from around the world. So if around the world, in the US, in Europe, we now have a spike of cases, the probability increases that cases are imported, maybe missed, um, and, and therefore leading you know, to, to, to a new spike. Unfortunately, this virus has very silent spread for weeks before it really goes and is detected again as, as a bigger problem. But Hong Kong, you know, is on top of things. I mean, the cases are still very low in Hong Kong, but it is concerning. Now, as you've mentioned that Hong Kong is uh, on top of things, and one of the things that you're doing is mass uh, testing. Just how effective is that in terms of controlling the spread? So mass testing was done by China with success. Uh, it was recently done in Czechia here in, in Europe with also reasonable uh, success. Uh, and it may be a strategy that we need to consider seriously for the future also in European countries or, or the US. Um, so so um, I think we need to learn. Um, it is in, an incredible uh, effort uh, with a lot of costs and resources needed um, and, and it does have value, but how much value we still need to understand. Yes, many things left to learn. Uh, Dr. Annelies Wilder-Smith, thank you very much. Speaking to us from the Yunnan Young Technological University.